Hi, my Yarny friends. My name is Crystal, and I'm on here today to share with you a baby yarn haul that I got from Hobby Lobby, a pattern that, an amigurami pattern that I'm addicted to that is really easy that even if you don't know how to do amigurami in the round, you could, you could do this one, most likely. <laughs> And, um, and then I'm going to talk about something at the end that's not yarn related. Um, I figured since I was able to do a vlog, I have showered today. I'm doing a little bit better that I um, would do a vlog and not try to press my luck to do it in the yarn room since I've showered today. <laughs> so, um, the other day... I watched Ella at No Catchy Name, and I don't remember the name of the vlog, but I will put it in the description box below her vlog that this amigurami was in. She had made a jellyfish, and I loved it. I thought it was adorable, and I wanted the exact same yarn that she used. I did go looking in my yarn stash, but nothing was just calling out to me, and I was very fixated on what she had used and um and then the next day we were wanting to go into Spokane we had a lot of errands to do and at first I didn't think I was going to be able to go because um the day before that my fatigue was just off the charts and then that morning it was bad but it let up and I'm like we better go let's just go right now and so we were able to go, and it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to just walk into a store and feel normal, as normal as you can get <laughs> when you're chronically sick. And so um, I went into Hobby Lobby and looked at their yarn. Now, I didn't bring my wheelchair, so I, I didn't get a shop for a crazy long time, but I was able to yarn shop and Easter basket shop for my granddaughter. I walked out of that store grinning from ear to ear. I was so excited. <laughs> I love yarn. I love yarn and I love to look at it and I liked to shop for a purpose. Normally I'm just buying yarn because it's on clearance or on a crazy good price with no idea what I'm going to do with it. But these, these four skeins, that's all I got was four skeins. They all had a purpose to make a jellyfish or more than one. It wasn't on sale, but I was like debated it for a little bit. And then I was like, you know what? I, I never get to be in a store looking at yarn. And here I am looking at yarn, wanting this yarn. And yes, it wasn't 30% off and I could have saved $6 and got another skein and a half or something, but, but it was just fun. So I had to let that part go. And um, so these are the four yarns that I chose. Um, so the first yarn I chose, so they're all Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn and I knew I wanted um, a print and they're all print. So this first one I got and it's not exactly true to color, but it's pretty darn close. This one is called Jazz Stripe. So really, really like that one and the colors in it. Um, and then the next, so this is a four weight yarn. The next one I got was um, the color name Royal Gorge. And it is coming up really pretty. This is the next one I'm working on. And then I made one in this print that I just bought with my yarn hole um, yarn haul and it's called kaleidoscope I really really like it except for this green right here isn't my favorite type of green but it's still super duper cute and I'll show you that in a bit and then the one that Ella at no catchy name used that I was like oh my gosh I want that exact one is called flapper girl I'm really enjoying this Hobby Lobby print yarn. Um, I like the variegation. I like when you, it's got, you know, little splotches of color in it. It's almost like it's like hand dyed yarn, but it's acrylic. So you get the best of both worlds if you're somebody like me who's sensitive to wool. 
Um, you still get something that looks hand dyed almost, but it's an acrylic and then it's cheaper. <laughs> I mean, wool has some wonderful benefits to it. It lets you, it breathes better and it um, holds your body temperature better because it breathes. And, um, but if you are sensitive to it, like me, you know, you got to do what you can do. So really, this is the one I wanted, and I chose four other ones. So um, I don't remember the name of the pattern or the person, but I'm going to link the pattern in the description box below. It is a free pattern, and I believe that you, if you want the PDF, you can buy it. I think she has it in a Ravelry shop, and she probably has a link. I'm not going to link that one, just the free one. So this is one similar to what Ella made. Mine's just a little bit different. Ta-da! That's my first one I made. I used a little different safety eyes than her. I think she said she used 20, mine are 16 millimeter. I did eyelashes and I think she grouped her tentacles more like that, which I might try sometime, but right now I'm, I've done them more like this, but you know, grouping them together looks awfully cute. So I might try that one with my next one. I've already made two like this. And, um, and then I do like her when you're crocheting it shut right here is when I sew this strap on. So you lay the two layers together and then the third one behind it and you crochet it. I do all my spirals together. I don't do them separately. And then I just crochet across the top of all of them. And so that's how I get them on there. But I might crochet them all together a little bit more together and try to do a jellyfish like that. I, um, so anyway, and then let me think. I used a four millimeter for the tube panels and then a 4.5 for the spirals to crochet it around and to do this part. I just wanted it a little bit tighter here. Um, and then I did four less um, chains for two of them just to give it a little bit of variety in the length. So love her. She's super duper cute. Really enjoyed making her. And then my second finished one is him. Isn't he cute? <laughs> I wish he showed up. You know, things look so much different in person than what I can show you on here. But he is super duper cute. I thoroughly enjoyed the yarn and making him. And then the next one I'm working on is the Royal Gorge. And I have one panel done and I'm working on the other panel. And so I want to, I need to make a total of five, three for my grandbabies and two for um, my daughter-in-law's, her niece and nephew. And I, you know what I just thought about? I really, I think I'm going to make a five weight yarn one. I think that would be really cute. I just want to see the size difference. It's always fun. And it's such a simple, quick pattern. If you were healthy and not sick, you could probably get one done in an hour. And then making the face is super easy because you make it on this panel. So if you're not really good at sewing, um, that's okay because you, 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 um, don't have to work like through here and pull it in. You get to work on it on the panel and then it hides all everything in the back and so and it is stuffed a little bit so yeah a lot of fun i love the pattern she has some other patterns she has a duck this duck that is adorable that i really want to make and she has a sheep that's really cute but i just need to stick with these for right now i'm enjoying them and 
I always get like, I want to do this. Like I want to make five of them. And if I stop, I'm going to lose my Crojo for them. Because typically I'm only a one and done kind of girl. But I'm enjoying, they're so quick. And I'm enjoying the yarn because they're different ones. So that helps me make more. So I want to finish all five and do the five weight one before I make something else and get into that. But the, the duck, I don't think I am allowed to show the picture, but I'll, I'll put a link to it. It's super cute. <laughs> um, so that was all I wanted to talk about yarny related stuff. I'm really hoping my next vlog is going to be a happy mail vlog so I can show I got um, a, a couple gifts. I got some or a few gifts. Some yarn, I mean some, not yarn, my brain, uh, cards, and um, I just want, you know, I want to show my appreciation for it and excitement for it. So this next thing I wanted to talk about, it is not yarn related, but since I talk about my health and um, uh, this has been brought up before I just want to address something um, that is kind of weighing on my heart because it's not the first time that it was mentioned and that is um, I battle with fatigue I have myelagic encephalitis which used to be known as chronic fatigue syndrome um, and then I have postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome and now possible Crohn's and all those things can give you fatigue and um, for myelagic encephalomitis the biggest thing is fatigue so um, a few people have mentioned depression and you know it's because of depression that, that is why I have fatigue and um, that's really so I've been sick for 12 years and it's very hard to hear because I've had to fight that with the doctors for 12 years or 13, I think. Anyway, um, and in the beginning, I knew it wasn't depression. It was a flu shot that ca caused all this. And um, I have no problems with depression like... Um, like taking antidepressants. I have my sister suffers with very severe depression. I'm very well aware of it. I battled it after my third son. My hormones got way out of whack. This is going to be too much information, but I um, had the never ending period after him. I had to go on hormones to stop it. Um, and I just never. Um, I was just different and I, finally I went to my doctor to say, you know, I can't, I, I'm, I'm just can't fight this. De I'm just always depressed and it's just not going away and it's been happening for months. And so she put me on antidepressants. She said that sometimes you just need to reset your body. It doesn't mean you're on them forever. And so I gladly took them. I took them for nine months and they helped me. And then I stopped them and didn't need them again. So I have no qualms. I totally, totally believe in antidepressants. And, um, and I'm grateful that they're out there. One of my sons takes an antidepressant. And prior to the flu shot, I was able to take pharmaceuticals. After the flu shot, I am very sensitive to almost every pharmaceutical that I've ever taken. All I have is bad side effects without any benefits. However, after about four years of being sick and every doctor wanting me to be on antidepressants, I was done. I was like, okay, I'm done. You know, I mean, hey, man, if it helps me, maybe, who knows? I was, I was finally, you know, stopped fighting it, trying to find an answer why I have this brutal fatigue outside of depression. I'm like, at that point, I just didn't care anymore. I would take any medicine that there was a chance that it could help my fatigue. And it was horrible. It totally crashed my blood pressure severely bad. 
So it brought it down to like 75 over 50. And if you know anything about blood pressure, it's supposed to be 120 over 80. So um, that was horrible, didn't work. So then she did genetic testing. So you can get tested genetically to see what your body will um, be able to tolerate. And the one she put me on genetically wasn't one I should have been taking. So, okay, let's try another one. And again, my body did not react favorably to it and it caused even more profound fatigue. And then just recently, I don't know, a year ago, I once again tried a different one on the list, all in hopes to try. It's very, very hard to live with fatigue. My fatigue is caused by, I will wake up in the morning and I'll be like, oh, I'm gonna have a good day today. I don't have fatigue. And then I eat. And usually after eating is what causes my profound fatigue. Not all the time, but the majority of the time it is happens after I eat. I have tried diets. I've tried trying to figure out what type of food it is. Sometimes I think, oh, it's eggs. Uh, nope, it's not. I think, oh, it's this. Nope, it's not. So, um, I have tried medications to raise my blood pressure because I have very bad crashes in blood pressure. I have high, I can get hypoglycemic. I have a new medicine I'm going to try for people like me who crash really bad after eating. It's called mast cell activation disorder or syndrome or histamine intolerance. So, there's this one medicine that I haven't tried yet that I'm going to now give a give it a whirl, but typically I'm, I don't react favorably to pharmaceuticals. I am saying this because there's too many times that people want to say your fatigue or the reason why you're struggling is depression. So doctors won't listen or believe that, you know, you when you say it's not depression. And also the reason why I was eager in the beginning to try uh, antidepressant after a few years was because I read this article about how it can actually reset your digestive system. And um, it was really good for like people with IBS and stuff like that, you know, because Pharmaceuticals can, can do more than just depression, you know, like the antidepressants can, can help and benefit in other ways. So I have tried and gone to so many different doctors. I am not afraid of pharmaceuticals. I've taken them in the past with great results. It's just now my body is hypersensitive and overreacting. And then I also have um, a condition the POTS causes dysautonomia. So my autonomic nervous system doesn't regulate things right. So people are asking me, was I having a panic attack? And when you have POTS, a lot of the times the doctors think you are having a panic attack when it's truly not a panic attack. When you have a panic attack, you can't, you know, your heart rate starts to get faster and faster. So for me, when that happens, I can lay down and my heart rate go to normal I lay there for five minutes. It go normal, stand back up. My heart rate's going up crazy again, lay down. It goes normal. And I can repeatedly do that. When you're having a panic attack, you, it doesn't just magically go away when you're laying down. You're still having the panic attack laying no matter what position you're in. And there's plenty of other things that um, it's similar to a panic attack, but not a true panic attack. It's dysautonomia. My autonomic nervous system, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic, they don't kick in like they're supposed to. It's, it's broken. It's faulty. And that's probably due to my small fiber neuropathy. You know, all this is controlled by nerves and my nerves are damaged. So, um, so, the reason for my fatigue, and there's so many other things that go into why I get fatigue, um, it is not due to depression. And 
I do know that there is a drug for fatigue, and I have tried that drug. I have tried the drug for fatigue. They give it to pilots so they can stay focused longer. They give it for narcolepsy, and and um, I have indeed tried that medication. I've tried so many medications in a desperate attempt to get better. And that's why I went to the clinic because I've tried so many medical doctors. I went to a nat more natural place and there, they're very strict. They don't let you take your own um, vitamins and stuff. They, they're, it's very controlled. You only can buy theirs and their products made me absolutely miserable. Not until I stopped taking their vitamin C and their protein drink and their multivitamin did I finally have relief from my brutal, brutal fatigue. And I added coffee back in. And um, so even regular stuff makes me worse. It's almost like it just causes toxicity. Does my, can my body doesn't process it properly? Is, is it not, you know, I, I don't know anymore guys, but I fight. I'm tenacious. I'm a fighter. I love life. Um, the one thing that, that I'm different about when it comes to, uh, somebody who's depressed and, um, somebody who isn't depressed is I want to do things and I will fight to do them regardless if I'm fatigued or not, if I can. There, you know, sometimes I can't. But I have does more desires than a typical person who has fatigues. I have a lot of things I want to do. Like, you know, I, I bought stuff for sewing. I bought stuff for cards making. I bought stuff to to spin for fiber, or I learned to crochet, I'm learning to knit, I have an electric bike I love, it makes me feel like a little kid, I can't get on it, I love to hike, I love to read, I can't read anymore, and I love to read, um, I'm more of a Christian fiction kind of person, maybe back in the olden times, or pioneer times, or, you know, um, times like that, um, or other types of fiction I used to like, but I can't even read, not because it's not that I don't want to, it's that I can't process the information. Um, I love to travel, and we have traveled during my sickness. I was adamant when my husband went to um, Jordan and Israel and to London, to Europe, that I was going to go with them, and uh, I didn't want to miss out on that, and that's when he, we first got a wheelchair for him to push me around in. And I started tremoring because I was pushing my body too hard. And um, but I was bound to determine not to miss out on that. Now I missed out on 50% of it because I was tremoring and my fatigue was so brutal. And um, I got to see the Sea of Galilee though, you know, so just be careful when you try to mention depression as a reason for somebody being chronically ill. I'm not saying that that can't be a reason for somebody. It truly can be, but um but that's not my reason. And I'm okay with antidepressants and would gladly take them if they would help me. And I believe in them fully. And, um, so I just wanted to say that cause it just, it's hard to continually hear it, um, to fight it with my doctors and then to fight it with, um, yarny friends or not fight with my friends or just to have to defend myself or feel like I have to give a reason or explain myself. And I know that I don't have to, and I can share what I want to share and what I don't want to share, but I thought since I do share my chronically ill journey, I just wanted you to know that my fatigue is not due to depression. So I think that's it. That's it. I'm having a couple good days and I'll take it. Um, I, there's no rhyme or reason that I can find. I've logged, done food logs. I've 
you know, I've lost weight. I've changed my diet. I've given up milk because I tested bad for it, like a sensitivity or allergy. I don't know, but it was severe. So anyway, guys, um, my voice is starting to hurt and I pay for any type of energy that I give out. I did, you know, it, it costs me. So anyway, I love you guys. I hope you guys are doing well. If you guys decide to make these cute little guys, I'd love to see them. <laughs> They're so much fun and you don't have to work in the round and um, you're just crocheting around to get them together. It was a lot of fun. It was, um, it was a lot of fun. I love you guys and I will talk to you later. Bye.